I'm Sally Newell Cohen, Senior Vice President of Global Communications at ICANN.org. Joining me today are Martin Boderman, Chair of the ICANN Board of Directors, and Yaron Marby, President and CEO of ICANN. We're talking today ahead of the ICANN 69 Virtual Annual General Meeting, and we'll take a look back at the year that we're completing and a look ahead at the year coming forward. So thank you both for joining me, and let's begin. So first, 2020 has been an extraordinarily eventful year as the entire world has grappled with the COVID-19 pandemic. So Martin, as ICANN Board Chair, can you tell me what the biggest challenges that you faced leading the board this year? I must say it was a big shock when, after leaving Montreal where I took the chair, uh, coming in January together and having to decide with the board that we wouldn't meet face to face in Cancun, not with each other, not with the community, which means that getting up to speed with this new board in my new role, I had to find an entire new way with the people around me to engage and to get things done. That isn't easy. No, indeed. Indeed. The same question for you, Joran. What has been the most significant leadership challenge that you've faced as ICANN president and CEO this year? I never ever in my career um, have faced the challenge of, of, of managing an organization um, during a pandemic. And, and uh, there were so many things that we needed to do uh, to be able to make sure that uh, we can contain this team in a positive spirit. Um, and since March, we have not been to in our offices around the world. We all work remotely. So many of my, my the things we mean, my executive team, is, is, is really make sure that we can deliver to the community the same, same level of support uh, now during different circumstances. And I have to say that I think that my team has really done a remarkable job. Um, they've been very supportive, not only of the board and me and my executive team, but also the community, which is the most important thing. Um, and we tried a lot of different things. We tried, uh, we, we, you know, how do we do this the best way? We trialed and some of arrows in our ways. But it's been, in a way, it's also been not everything is negative with us. We, I think we tried some new ways of interacting with the community and supporting the community. That is something we can learn from going forward. Thank you. And speaking of the community, I have this question for you both. And I'd like for you to describe to me what the collaboration with the community has been like during this time. So Martin, if we could start with you, please. Actually, I've been amazed that after the initial shock of not meeting together in Cancun and the initial shock about the decision to do so, the community really actually continued to work together to make things happen. So despite the changed circumstances, trying to find ways together to get the job done, yes, things have changed and there's been some difficulties that had led to some extension, some, uh, how, how do we get that done? But together, people realized that the job was more important than ever. And in that way, I've been really impressed by all the things I've seen happen during this quite intense year, despite the fact that we couldn't meet face to face. Indeed. And, and Joran, you've had many conversations with the community leaders. Can you talk a little bit about that collaboration from your perspective? So this is one of the positives, I think, um, over, over this period is that we intensified many of the conversations we've had with, with different parts of the community. Um, in a way, it was easy, easier to set up you know, a webinar, a call, a conference call, a Zoom room, um, and you can find time because uh, people have, it's, it's been a little bit easier to, to plan. Um, so not everything, as I said, is negative about this. But I want to point out that the community has been quite amazing. I mean, if you look at what they actually delivered during this period, it's good to remember that a lot of the ICANN work is actually done on email lists, through webinars, through uh, conference calls, um, and, and they they really done fantastic work. I mean, look at it. Um, uh, the expert APDP, the work with the subpro, the, a lot of the review work that it's been doing, the auction proceeds. Um, it's it's a little bit of a catch-up effect, actually, from the community. Well done. 
Yes, indeed. A lot of work. And we'll, we'll talk about that more in just a second. But I wanted to uh, stick with this, Huron, for just a second. And you've, you've talked several times about the lessons we've learned through the virtual meetings and the shift. And uh, you, in fact, you recently published a blog about this. And I'm wondering if you could share a little bit more about your thoughts on seeking that dialogue with the community to, to address the future and what the future is going to be like with meetings, whether it's virtual or in person. I remember when, when we took the decision to cancel the Cocoon meeting, and there was a, you know, at the time, we, we were two weeks earlier than anyone else. Um, two weeks after we made that decision, there was a, everybody else started to close down as well. But I think, I think Martin mentioned that as well many times in his speeches, is that in the beginning we thought this is going to pass fast. Um, and we came together to do the Cocoon meeting, we did that on a very short notice, it went very well, I think. And we learn from that lessons all the time. But it becomes apparent now when we see that we don't know when we're going to come back to full ICANN meetings, um, that we need to rethink um, the um, how we're doing things. And, and this is very important, is that the meetings belongs to the community. We are there to serve. And, and in the conversations with many members of the community, I, I got this... Um, I, it was a clear message. We need to discuss the future of how we interact with each other. Um, and therefore, our role, together with the board, is to set up and facilitate a process for doing that. Um, so we came, we're coming out with a survey, uh, which is really meant to be a sort of a format for discussions within the different constituencies of ICANN, um, in the different regions, um, to, to, for you really to discuss how you think about ICANN meetings, not only now, uh, during this pandemic, but also maybe in the future, lessons learned, things that we can do better. Uh, how do we interact with each other? I leave it up to you. And what we're going to do with that is that after, based on that survey, uh, all that discussions, we're going to form, formulate a proposal based on that, which we will go back to through the uh, mechanism of the SOs and AC leaders. Uh, when they agree on it, we're going to go on a public consultation on it to make sure that this is really a bottom-up uh, a process. And after that, it's going to be brought to the board for, for the formal decisions. So I, I really ask you to engage in those discussions and, and be part of that. And I'm looking forward to see what the community thinks about uh, how to do meetings and when to do meetings and how we set up meetings and, and all those things, uh, because the decision actually belongs in the multi-stakeholder model bottom-up process. Yes, you're right. I thank you for that. I also, um, I think it's important to also note that there will be a session on Monday with the board and the community where there's an opportunity for the community to share their thoughts as well in addition to the survey. The survey is still the most important vehicle, but that's an opportunity as well. Um, Joran, I'm gonna come back to you again, um, going back to that concept of all of the work that the community has been able to produce despite the fact that we're virtual. And there are, there are many different sets of recommendations that will be coming up soon for implementation. Recently, uh, ICANORG introduced a proposed operational design phase as, uh, as a mechanism prior to implementation. Could you tell us a little bit about this concept? Yeah, um, so in, in a way, we always done this. Uh, before the board makes a decision, um, we at ORG prepare that decision to the board. Um, and, and we do that um, to make sure that the board has answered to all these questions. So a couple of things has happened, and one of them is that many of the things that we now see from the community is actually more complex than just policies. Um, let's take Subpro for an example, which is a very large investment, uh, but also going to have organizational effects on, on ICANN org, you know, people, where to place them, um, the cost for it, systems, all of that. The board needs to have a visibility before they make some decisions. Um, same thing with the auction proceeds, um, same things with GDPR. And, and thinking about that, we realized it was sort of a, it's an empty space from the transparency and accountability part between the GNSO, for instance, makes its recommendation to the board, makes its decision. It's sort of a silent period. Um, so the most important thing with this one was really to create an opportunity for transparency for the community, what happens to this work but also to create an opportunity for, for to make sure that when we prepare the board, um, the, the, we, we, we'll have an opportunity to ask community, and for instance, GNSO, how we got it right. Because sometimes it's not, you know as well as I do, it sometimes it's not that easy. 
I think that in the long run we will actually save time and, and resources because of this, because after the border system we go into an implementation. And, and implementation often today deals with things that might have been made, maybe done in the, uh, before the board makes the decisions, and sometimes even things that should be in the PDP. So the most important thing with this suggestion is actually to formalize sort of an internal process but increase the transparency about it. In, and not for all PDPs or not all everything we do, but for more, the more complex ones. And the ones who's going to make the decision if this is needed is going to ultimately be the ICANN board who's going to order me, tell me, uh, to, to set up an operational design phase. So, so that leads to the question, Martin, for you, how do you see the board benefiting in, from, from this operational planning and the community? Well, it, as, as Joran explained, truly, we always need to understand what it really is, what we're saying yes to, and how much it will cost, how much effort it will take to do it, and uh, whether that's reasonable, uh, and whether it will achieve the goals. So, sort of, the exploration has always been there. But now, by making it an explicit process, there's also a clear invitation to the community to say, well, this is actually what we what we intended. Make sure that it's well understood and not just thrown from the community to the org, like go and come with a plan to implement it without taking responsibility for how that looks. So for the board, I think this is an excellent opportunity to, for enhanced transparency uh, in, in the process and make sure that once we get to decide on what's on our table, we understand what the community thinks about it we understand from the organization what it would take them to make it happen. And I think at that point, the board is actually able to take the right decision uh, for, for the sake of ICANN. So I'm very pleased with this. Thank you. I, I think there's also an opportunity to for prioritization as well. And it, with, with the many different aspects of what ICANN is grappling with, the different programs and the initiatives, Prioritization is going to be key. So I want to ask you both about priorities. So starting with you, Martin, what do you consider the top priorities for the board next year? Okay, well, as Joran said earlier already, there's a couple of big initiatives of the community that came to fruition this year, like uh, the EPDP, like the SUPRO, uh, the discussions on uh, the DNS abuse and the D DNS security uh, issues is here and need to be responded to. We also have the results from reviews with recommendations for action to improve the system, uh, ATRT3, but also other reviews. And we even have some Workstream 2 uh, actions that still need to be implemented by ICANN, the ecosystem. And in that, it's clear that it's also very important that we prioritize, that we know what is actually the most prevalent. Uh, can we do it? Uh, so that's that's one of the aspects. And the other aspect with that is to make sure, and we've been working very hard on that this year, I think, is how community organization and board make things happen better together. So how we can make the multi-stakeholder model uh, evolve towards even higher effectiveness. Uh, together. So I think with that, we continue our track uh, towards the year to come as well. Understood. Joran, the question is the same for you. I know that, that much of what Martin just talked about is what's going to be the priority for the org, but for you particularly, what are, what are some of your key priorities going forward in the next six to nine months? I mean, for, for a deeper um, view on that, uh, one thing you can go, actually go and look at is on my goals uh, for this year, which is um, decided by the board, which gives a fairly good input to, to my priorities. Um, but and apart from the fact that, remember, we have specific roles. Uh, this is a multi-stakeholder model. This is a bottom-up process. Um, and, and we in the board are, are really there to make sure that, for instance, the recommendations is actually done. Um, in the way that the community intended it. So it's a lot of about implementation, it's a lot of work about setting up structures for doing that. So it's, it, and, and because of this catch-up effect now, we are going to be, uh, it's going to be a lot of work for us. Um, 
Not, so, but on top of that, there is a couple of other things as well, especially one thing that I would mention is that we will continue to work when it comes to, um, we, a couple of years ago, we defined that we see an increased interest from governments around the world in, in how internet works. And, and we all know there are some misunderstandings about ICANN's role and, and what I can do and what is the internet compared to platforms on top of the internet, etc., etc. So one priority we still have and will continue to have is to um, to to work with governments and legislators to to tell what this role of ICANN or what can actually do. And, and the second part of that is we have seen uh, more and more you see legislative proposals that can have an effect on people's ability to connect to the interoperable internet. Um, which we, of course, think it's not the best of ideas. We actually think it's quite bad, and therefore we're working with that as well. So you will see us, from a technical perspective, continue uh, to work uh, with legislators and other ones. We don't take sides in policy dis discussions. That, up, that is up to governments. But just sometimes point out that maybe this is not a good idea if you would like to have the ability for people to connect to the Internet. But there is a third thing we also see, and that is... a. There is an, and we sort of use the word technical internet governance for it in, because we don't really have a good word for it. And that is that we see other threats to the interoperability of internet uh, coming around. Um, we see proposals in technical forums that can actually have an effect on, on people's ability to connect to the internet. You, you see them in 5G with network slicing. I think that was something we talked about during the Montreal, uh, sorry, the last meeting. Um, you see proposals like uh, new IP. Uh, where we're coming out with a paper about that very soon. Where you, you know, technical uh, in technical forums in standardizations um, that happens in new forums, and, and we need to be active there as well. Um, that's a little bit new to us to some extent. I mean, our answer is when it comes to those technical, this is often very simple. We believe that the uh, the governance model that exists for that, for instance, using ITF, is the best model because it's been successful over the years. It shouldn't be anywhere else. Um, the last thing I want to mention is that we even see proposals that um, the UN system uh, should sort of rectify the DNS, uh, calling it, saying that it should be a critical infrastructure, for instance. And we, of course, think that uh, we are a better alternative to protecting the DNS systems um, than, for instance, the UN. So because, not only because... Um, um, and the last thing I want to mention on this is also a priority, is to create more tools uh, for the community uh, and for others. You, you've seen that we, we, we build tools like the DAR system, the health indicators, um, and the system we, we, we've developed together with the community to look into registrations uh, that contains the name uh, COVID, for instance. I know that during, this, uh, during the abuse session, um, the NS abuse session, uh, we're going to show you some numbers from there. So that is also a high priority, to be able to give the community uh, good facts and statistics before they make decisions about that. So there is, there is a lot of things that are happening that is not only related to, the, to implementing the community's wishes, but together with the community to do all this work. There are many priorities, to be sure. Um, it, there's also exciting opportunities, and I think you, you've outlined them incredibly well in how ICANN works with the internet ecosystem and, and can make positive impact. Um, I want to thank you both for sharing your insights. There's so much more we could talk about, but these are this is a, uh, a good start to uh, leading us into ICANN 69. So thank you both for your insights, and thank you for your leadership as we navigate this year ahead. Oh, thanks, Tony. And if, if anyone would like to learn more and get any more information on the topics we've discussed or to learn more about how to participate in ICANN, please visit our website, ICANN.org. And thank you for watching.